And welcome inside the backstage pass. It is hump day Wednesday. Yeah, it kind of feels like a, a Tuesday after the, the Labor Day holiday and all the driving I've done. I'm prepared to wind down this weekend and not go as far, but it was a great show last weekend with uh, Chris Cagle, Andy Griggs up there at Pedrotti's Ranch. And of course, uh, coming up here uh, this Sunday, tickets go on sale for the big show uh, with Daryl Worley. We're going to be back out there for Veterans Day, November 11th. Tickets go on sale this week. Uh, look out for that at fullcirclemomentsllc.com with uh, Daryl Worley and our friends over at Full Circle Moments. Again, presented by our friends over at MitchMax.com and, of course, uh, Bangtail Whiskey and our friends at Hank Jr. Productions back here live on the YouTube channel and always at the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Uh, something good is cooking there. At least we're trying to draw it up. Uh, next week, hope to have some Dallas Cowboy talk with our good friend Brad Sham, uh, the voice of the Dallas Cowboys, too, as well. So definitely uh, you mix a little football, you mix a little music, and you get our guest today uh, because this single, All Trucks Go to Heaven, uh, it was released to radio August 22nd, and you get Chris and Ben, and that equates to Boomtown Saints. I just love the name of the group here. Guys, what's going on? Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having us. Glad to be here. This is, uh, we've been excited about this one. I, I love it, too. I'm excited when we <laughs> put out the arrangement and put everything together. Uh, so let's talk about this. Uh, you know, you guys coming together uh, to form this group of Boomtown Saints. Uh, tell me all about this. I mean, because it's always cool to just meet new duos out there that uh, – come together of course follow the story where you meet how you met uh songwriting uh, follow the path of everything uh let's let's kick it off there chris how did all this start heck yeah so um ben and i met at a gym here we're in nashville tennessee it's where we live and we uh we, we're at a gym a crossfit gym actually um not either of us do that now yeah but uh we were at a crossfit <laughs> gym and uh I, I i met him and we just started becoming buddies about uh that's five years ago five yeah, years five ago, years ago. About, uh, just over four years ago, we actually figured out it was four years ago, two weeks ago. Uh, he asked me, he was, he was a solo artist and, uh, his, he actually told me his career was winding down. He said, December is going to be my last December, 2018 is going to be my last show. And he said, but I have a show coming up in a couple of weeks. Can you help me find a bassist? So uh, I, I was in the corporate world and, uh, I, in previous life, I was a musician. Um, and he said, can you help me find a bassist? Like, sure. I'll help you find a bassist. Uh, search for three weeks to help them find a bassist. Uh, it's this time of year for anybody who's in the industry knows that everybody's booked mm -hmm. this time of year. Um, kept kept trying, kept trying, couldn't find anybody. On a Wednesday night, he said, listen, man, the show's on Friday. I just need somebody, his exact phrase to me, and I'll never forget this. Mm -hmm. You say it. I said, man, I just need somebody to go up on stage and hold a stick and make it sound halfway decent. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, well, I, I, was, I was a guitar player. I'll do it. I'm, I mean, it's probably eight to 10 songs. And I was like, send me the set list. Uh, 40 songs later uh, that we were going to perform two days later. Uh, I learned it. We went up on stage. Um, we were booked to come back by the end of the night. He said, mm -hmm. we come out with me next weekend. I did the same thing. We were booked to come back by the end of the night. Uh, he said, we come out next weekend. The same exact thing happened a third week in a row. And then uh, we were like, Hey man, like we should give this a shot. Yeah, so you got something. Yeah. So we started. Uh, at the time, it was Hopscotch Mafia. Um, we were the Hopscotch <laughs> Mafia. We we're like, this is have some fun called the Hopscotch Mafia. I was in the corporate world. He was finishing his career. We we're like, this is. I looked thing. at him and I went, "You're going? Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> they gonna think we're rappers?" <laughs> yeah. And so we uh, were Hopscotch Mafia, and it, it it turned into, and here we are. We're sitting here on the uh, on the backstage pass podcast and talking about it. A our song that's on the radio. It's crazy. Yeah, that's, a, that's a pretty cool arrangement, too, especially uh, have not gotten, I don't think, a, a duo that's done. We, we've done some cool ones here on the show, but I don't think anybody's uh, met at the gym. Interesting story across yeah, the That's a pretty yeah, cool new thing for us. <laughs> Discovery of all things to have with two great yeah, musicians. All, all the dude. random places. <laughs> all the random places to meet, no doubt about that, especially with, with Nashville being uh, such a small town, big city, but, of course, a, a small town and smaller than people think when it comes to the – uh, entertainment business. So as far as uh, songwriting, and I guess let me back up a little bit before that, as far as taste in music growing up, I always love to ask this question because everybody can be different coming from different backgrounds, doesn't necessarily have to be in someone's family or, you know, playing alongside a musician like a, a parent or a grandparent or something like that too. As far as background, what you guys uh, grew up listening to was a little bit of everything. Yeah, but very different. It was, it was very different because my, my dad actually, he did not like country music. Wow. He, I grew up on Van Halen, mm -hmm. uh, the Eagles, Beatles, all that. I, that's what I grew up. My brother brought the country music into the house. So I started growing up listening to Tim McGraw, Kenny Chesney, Toby Keith, Garth Brooks, all of that. And that's where 
my, I, I just, I latched onto it. I went, wow, those are songs about me and, and all of my friends. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go towards that. Yeah. Like and so I grew up actually, um, my family was very, uh, my dad was big into jazz, smooth jazz. Um, we, we, we actually talk about it on stage sometimes when things are flowing. I, I grew up on the Earl Clues of the world, George Benson's, uh, Boney James, a saxophone mm-hmm. player. Uh, when I started becoming, a, you know, getting to my teens, I had some some guys that were like brothers to me that were big into R and B. So the Jodeces, the Boys to Men's of the world, were my, uh, you know, still to this day, Boys to Men and Brian are my two favorite artists of mm-hmm. all time. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the fact that we started writing music together was kind of a strange, strange combo. But I think it's it's it's, it's worked. Right? Yeah. It's worked. <laughs> well, you get a little bit of experience from one genre, bring to the other, and kind of kind of back and forth there too to pick each other's brains on, you know, how to write songs and things like that. Well, let's dive into this single first. I'll have you guys play it, and then we'll come back and talk all about it after the break too. We got to get a word in for the. Uh, sponsors here on the backstage pass and of course we'll do some rapid fire at the end again all trucks go to heaven it was released to radio august 22nd and digital streaming uh july the 15th so you guys if y'all haven't checked it out make sure you go do that uh great great uh tunesmith that wrote this thing so we'll come back talk about that uh the floor is all yours gentlemen take it away all right so just real quick we got like leading into with this um everybody's going through something uh that uh other people don't know about uh, a lot of times we come from a place where uh, you thought I even given up possibly. And um, at the end of the day, uh, we're all God's children. We're all important. We're all unique. And uh, just, just keep fighting. And that's what this song's about. It's called All Trucks Go to Hell. Seat starting to tear. There's a new crack in the dash every week, I swear. A little more static on the radio. All them miles stop and show. It's just a matter of time, I know, before I have to let her go. I hope she winds up where them streets are going to turn back for the wild red dirt bones of the run. My old shotgun. Cold six in the console, windows down, and clothes in short, better ride tips out. Burn on sticker in the rear view, sunset. And I'm bet the guy loves good old boys like me. All trucks go to him. Them horses ain't as fast coming off the rim. That tailgate's barely hanging on by three. That chrome's bound to bed the dust. That thing can't fight the rust. I don't want to give her up. Damn them by the I hope she winds up where them streets go. Turn back for the wide open red turn rolls up the front. My old bird out shotgun. Go six in the console, windows down, their coats in short, their right tips out. Burn on sticker in the rear view, sunset. Now i got love, good old boys like me. All trucks go to heaven. I know these good years have seen better things, but I hate to see it riding out this way. I hope she winds up where them streets are going, turning back for the wide open red dirt roads up and run. My old bird out shotgun. Cold six in the console, windows down, set coats in the short bed, right tip side. Burn on a sticker in the rear view, sunset. I'm bet kind of love good old boys like me. Then, man, I just got to leave. All trucks go to heaven. All trucks go to heaven.
that's one of my favorite songs to have in the truck and just enjoy in fact i'm actually going to use that one for the theme song tomorrow night for a football game out there driving with my co-host there to the broadcast and we get to drive to houston for a broadcast out in the Brazosport area and uh, i'm just gonna play that on the radio and he was a nashville guy i'm gonna see what he thinks there you go i know he's gonna love it there too Boomtown town saints uh, back here on the broadcast uh here on the backstage pass, Chris and Ben. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll come back, talk all about that song, talk about the writing, the idea behind it, and a whole lot more. And, of course, uh, Megan Patrick coming up here in a couple of weeks here on the uh, backstage pass, uh, September 22nd. So be on the lookout for that. Quick timeout here on the show. Uh, Bank Till Whiskey, of course, Mitch Max, the sponsors that make it happen. We're coming back more with Boomtown Saints. Hang tight. The Bank Till Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune into the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here on the show again, it is a grand slam of sports and music. Of course, tomorrow night, if you get a chance to tune in there, it's at Brazosport, the Vider Pirates, the Brazosport Exporters on CajunCountryRadio.com. Yours truly on the call, along with Robbie and Mary and Kevin will be there uh, pregame probably about uh, 6 o'clock, kickoff at 7 tomorrow over in Brazosport. Always love that area over there to see some great uh, football, high school football. If you're looking to come out, go, go do that too as well. Again, back here with uh, Chris and, and Ben of Boomtown Saints. So, uh, we talked a lot about this song, how much I loved it, too. If people haven't checked it out, All Trucks Go to Heaven is, is out there on radio and definitely uh, digital streaming uh, for your listening pleasure. Uh, the idea behind it, uh, Chris, this had to be a lot of fun. I mean, the, the song sends a great message out there to, to people. And uh, the the writers, man, these these tunesmiths you guys got to work with, I believe uh, uh, Ben Stennis was one of them, too, and, and Taylor Phillips. Tell us all about this. Yeah, Ben Stennis, Taylor Phillips, and Jeremy Busey, they, um, for those that don't know, uh, Ben Stennis uh, wrote To You Can't by uh cody johnson uh mm-hmm. taylor phillips i if i list we, if we listed the number yeah. ones he's had just in the last year uh we'd be here for the next 30 minutes uh <laughs> and jeremy busey as well they, they um they're uh they're incredible obviously and yeah. you know when we when the song kind of it came up as artists our job is to connect with the audience um obviously we have some songs that, that, that we firmly believe in that we wrote either individually or together. And we were like, you know, these are the songs. And then when you, when you get to connect with artists like this and then something like this comes up, um, our, our job is to put out a song that uh, will connect the audience the most. Um, this one was undeniable. And when you have people like that uh, that are on it, um, you know, it's just flattering to be able to be considered to release something uh, by these individuals. Uh, but yeah, if you guys haven't checked them out, if you don't know who they are, uh, strongly recommend. Actually, as a matter of fact, Kane Brown's current number one, uh, Taylor Phillips, is the writer of. Mm-hmm. So he's on the radio today. Uh, mm-hmm. number, the number one's by Taylor Phillips. So, uh, man, just just flattered to be able to even be in, in consideration and have our names mentioned with people like them. Now, I know this is setting up too a little bit, Ben. This the first EP is coming up for uh, 2023, probably the early part of that. And this is kind of the beginning of, of what's to come. I mean, I'm ready for more, no doubt about it. After one song, I'm I'm thirsty there and hungry for a little bit more music too. So tell, tell us all about this because anytime a new project like this come out, especially the first ever EP, this has to be exciting. 
It's absolutely exciting. We, uh, we've been going down and we've, we've been writing quite a bit for this new EP. We've also been looking at other, other songs too. What we have, what we recorded, what? Two weeks ago, man. Two, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we went down and, uh, wrote with, uh, James LeBlanc, Philip White down in Muscle mm-hmm. Shoals. And in Rick Hall's office. It, okay. Just, if anybody's ever, if anybody's ever seen the Muscle, do- Shoals. Muscle Shoals documentary, you know, the magic of that place. It's absolutely awesome. And we got to write with two amazing songwriters. Got two great songs. You may sit down for a writing session. You may get half a song. You may have to come back. <laughs> we wrote two songs in three and a half hours that were like, wow, mm-hmm. these are great songs. These these are going to be in contention for what we're going to do for this, for this EP. So right now we are actively writing, looking for songs for this EP to come out. Uh, we're, we're putting the best that we can put. We actually have one, our next single is coming out. It's called Black Top Don't. Um, Woo! Mm. Song. So as much as um, All Tricks Go to Heaven is a ballad, uh, a love song, Black Top Don't is a boot stomper. Uh, when we play it live, it's the one that probably gets the most uh, mm-hmm. response of anything yeah. we do, including covers. If we'll do a cover or two here and there. Uh, Black Top Don't, even when people don't, don't, haven't heard it before, uh, the response we get from that song is absolutely insane. It's a boot stomper. It's uh, uh, the hook is my baby want to go with the black top dump. And it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about country girls and it's about, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just getting out there. But I mean, like we even saw that when we were playing this past weekend at the NHRA. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you, you can see everything from the stage. You know, you're like, you get into the zone, but you can still look and see. And these people never, ever, heard this song before but when you look down when you get to that last chorus and you see them go my baby want to go with a black top don't you see it coming out of their mouth you're just like wow okay that song connected with you on a, a much broader country girls level. cowboys i mean you name it there everybody was uh yeah that, that that's the song it's coming out next and it's um we're excited about that that's that that's for sure now as far as the name goes and i love the name when it crossed my desk too and i was like yes i love learning about bands i mean that is the objective of this show or at least one of the objectives we put out there boomtown saints i mean just uh i don't know you, you guys put both heads together and come up with this i was like that's a cool band name <laughs> yeah so uh you know one of the things of both of our our story um is very much a you can't get any lower individually. Uh, we've both been to places in our lives where we've reached the bottom and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, m- most people would give up. I mean, we, we, we post about this on social media a bit. Um, and it's not, it's not fake. We've both been to places in our lives where we both consider giving up, uh, in, uh, you know, whether you consider literally or even spiritually, I mean, there's, mm-hmm. we, we've considered it. And, uh, you know, one of the things that kept us going was our faith our faith in God, our faith in uh, that, that we have a purpose here. Uh, so when we were considering names, we really wanted to have something that when you saw a name, that's the first thing people see about you, know about you. And you mm-hmm. can, uh, you can see a name and, and know something about them. Uh, that's where the saints came from. Uh, another thing that, uh, involved in it is the fact that we came from a place where we, this is, uh, you know, I was in the corporate world, he was giving up music. And then now we're sitting here. Um, a, a boom town by definition is a town that has, unexpected and sun prosperity and uh that's that's kind of our story as a, as a duo i mean we just didn't expect to be here um and it happened so quick and uh the, the two of them together you know it's it's unexpected sudden just we're here we have a song mm-hmm. on the radio and uh when people see saints they immediately uh, relate that to faith and that was very important to us so uh when we were talking through names we had a hundred of them uh we were sitting in the studio with just a hundred maybe hunt 200 it was noah gordon and gary crane were sitting in the studio and one day we were like what about boomtown saints and it stuck is that it's about a year uh, about a, almost two years ago now and it just wow. stuck yeah it was almost two years that's yeah. crazy how, yep that's crazy how time flies now chris i understand you mentioned the corporate world you did a uh, pharmaceutical uh type type deal with executive there and and ben if i was reading correctly uh you were going to go back to, to medical school before winning this uh uh national singing competition T- tell me about that well, I had uh, I had graduated from college, and uh, I was I was sitting there going, "Okay, my brother's a doctor." Like, okay, <laughs> I can I can go. I can go. No pressure. No pressure. I, no pressure. Yeah, no. I mean, that was that was exactly it. I was like, "Hey, no, no pressure, son. You do what you want to do, but I really Your want you to become a doctor. Yeah. Your brother's a doctor. Uh, you're gonna enjoy Christmas and Thanksgiving." Um, uh-huh. 
but I I entered to the contest and one thing led to the next and I signed an independent record deal to, to move to Nashville. Mm -hmm. And from there, you know, going through those struggles of literally, man, as mom gave him her blessing. Yeah. My dad, my dad passed when I was 19 years old. I was a sophomore mm -hmm. in college. And, uh, my mom, she was like, Hey, you know, go, go chase your dream, go chase mm -hmm. it. Because one day you're going to look back and go, why didn't you do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and from from my perspective, uh, when I met Ben, actually, I was um, I was consulting in the healthcare the ph pharmaceutical realm. Um, I mm -hmm. helped pharmaceutical companies take products to market, help them commercialize them. I won't get into all the, the yeah. Yeah. behind that, but it was uh, you know when the, when when a drug comes out on the market, there's a lot of programs in place. There's a lot of things in place that help patients get access to it, and mm -hmm. I actually helped them build those programs. Um, and I was happy. I was content. Everything was going great. And then, uh, I don't know, man, I, I, I've, I've been, uh, I've been a musician since I was 10 years old mm -hmm. and had this opportunity and it was either go all in or on your deathbed, look back and say, I, well, what I could have done was, and that we were like, let's do this guy. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's, that's what I can. And I, and I, I really resonate with you guys, uh, story so well, cause I did, uh, radio broadcasting for uh, damn near 20 years and, and looking back on it too. I mean, I love my careers now too, and I get more time with my family to be able to do stuff like this when I started doing this. And of course my other day job that I have, but I love what I do because I could have gone to law school, had a passion for law and no offense to those other careers, but um, let me just say music and uh, talking for a living are, are a little bit better. Than up with, <laughs> yeah, singing, um, singing is a bit uh, better than talking to <laughs> Going to concerts and having a cold one and just uh, uh, sitting back, relax, spend more time with the family, which is good. I just became a new dad myself. So my daughter's about two and a half now. So she's oh wow getting into Pretty understanding nice. things and all that kind of stuff too. So it's it's a cool uh, time to be a parent. You, you just had one yourself, you're saying? No, I have a two and a half year old. Okay. All right. So we're right there. Okay. He's got one due in October. Oh, man. Congratulations. I my third girl, That's man. Third. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a good life. It's a good life, man. My third girl coming on. Like three girls. Got, I've got two girls. He's got three girls. Wow. We're very yes. outnumbered in our houses. Girls, it's, yes, rule. I guess it's. In our orbit. it's yeah. Orbit. <laughs> my brother has, count them, three girls. And, and, um, Come on now. Yeah, it's it's uh, six, four, and a year and a half. So it's it's definitely the ages of yeah. It's uh, yeah. and my only one, but I can tell you what, as you know, you both know, as being parents, one can be multiplied into enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like why well, here we go again. But I'm so excited. I'm well, excited. congratulations to you on on the new one too. As well, have y'all thought of a name, uh, Chris? Have y'all thought or a name? Hope, for your... Hope oh. Larkin, Hope Larkin Ramos is going to be your name. So it's. Uh... <laughs> That's yeah, beautiful. So, yes. Along, so I had this tattoo before uh, she was even a thought, but it's it's faith, hope, and love. It's something my sister and I both. Uh, my wow. sister is my hero. She uh, long story behind. I won't get into it, but she's my hero. She is uh, my my sister and I are the matriarch and patriarch of our of our line. And mm -hmm. um, my wife actually, she has uh, hope has been a, a word in her life, something that she's been anchored to for a very long time, and so. Uh, when we found out we were going to have a girl, we were like, man, hope is it. Mm -hmm. hope is it. it means much more to us than just uh, just a name. That's a beautiful name, no doubt. And uh, congrats on nothing like being a, a parent and having evenings with your child. And, of course, I, I just love it, too, because this, this weekend I'm taking her. And you know this, Ben, when they get to that two and a half range, I'm like, Finally, she like understands some of what Halloween means, and we can take her trick or treat. <laughs> like, and I have her go pick out a Halloween costume. This guy right here. Oh, well, I love Halloween. I, I don't know if you. Are. I just that's my one of my favorite, probably the favorite holiday to watch scary movies, and then take her trick or treat. So I. Okay. I so we always do a different. Make it short, Ben, because we, we always do a Halloween for forty five. We do a different <laughs> theme every single year. Okay, doesn't matter where it is. This year it's pirates, and so I am literally building a pirate ship in the front yard. I am not a carpenter. I am terrible at carpentry. <laughs> I have no idea how this thing is going to come out looking. I mean, it could look like a rowboat or something. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a rowboat. But we're going to stick a skeleton in it with a bottle of rum and call it a good day. But it's going to be a fun way. To, you know, the thought that counts, right, Chris? The thought that counts. There you <laughs> to put it in there, man. It's the thought that the little one sees it and she can process all the information. Right now, I tell you, for me, it's this Disney kick. It's um. Uh, anything on that channel but it's this toy story kick I, I don't know where they just their little minds are just uh fascinated with it but you can watch it 50 times and of course as an adult you're like oh god again again sweetheart again 
<laughs> okay. All right. All right. So then we tried uh, Frozen the other night too. And so my one of my family members uh, vacation was last week and she got her into the, the Frozen stuff now. So it's kind of, uh, I was like, finally something different. Thank you. We'll have to watch. For now. For now. Until Frozen <laughs> plays for the 840th time, which is. I just, I just remember when that, that came out. This was during Halloween. I had a couple of friends. This is not me involved in this. They bought a handle. He was on a. They bought a handle of rum or whatever it was, and they they had a bet with each other. You'd have to take a shot anytime you saw an Anna, Elsa, or what was the Olaf. Olaf costume. <laughs> he said by by the second, like it was like thirty minutes into it, they were sitting on the porch, drunker than anything, going, "Let it go, please God, let it go." He was, and that was awesome. Oh man, I, you know, I'll tell you this: if I get back to, I get back to Nashville, I'm gonna hang out with you guys because I love laughing and I'm up for a good time. So it's like you guys start doing good stories of that, and uh, we're going to get back there in, in uh, March of next year for CRS 2023. I'd love to hang out with you guys. Oh, yeah. Laughing, so I got a bunch of stories I could, I could share too. Be, being a new dad, it, it definitely changes you for the better, but in so many ways of uh, just making you laugh and then just knowing that. Uh, God's greater purpose is is to do that. So, I mean, again, all the parents out there, man, just uh, you're, you guys are saints, no doubt, no pun intended, but you guys are uh, saints here with, with Boomtown Saints today. Uh, we'll take a final time out. I'll tell you what, uh, we'll come back. You guys, y'all want to do one more performance? What do you sure, say? we'll do one more. Okay. We'll come back after the, uh, the time out here, of course, word for Bangtail Whiskey, and of course, uh, we'll pay some bills there. And uh, don't forget, uh, September 22nd, a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, Megan Patrick here on this show and uh sony music you know where you love her caitlin smith coming by here on the backstage pass here in just a couple of weeks so two big female powerhouses killing it now in country music and one day we'll be saying boomtown saints up for this award at the cma hey, award <laughs> yeah. new duo of the year i could just project that right now here well this is ccma Weekend Canadian Country Music Awards. So hey, I'm, remember that too. Whatever. <laughs> that too. <laughs> we'll take a quick time out. It's Chris. It's Ben. It's the Boomtown Saints live on the YouTube channel at the Sports Guys Podcast.com. You're still gonna talk sports with the guys with football season starting tomorrow night. The Buffalo Bills at the LA Rams, Super Bowl champions. And of course, week one, if you're fantasy leagues, I got a draft tonight. Yeah, about seven o'clock. It's my third one. So I better do well with that too. So get your fantasy drafts in. And of course, uh, check us out. We'll be putting some stuff up at the uh, sportsguyspodcast.com for your fantasy takes and, of course, sharing drafts and things like that. Coming back more with Boomtown Saints, a word from Bangtail. Hang tight. The Bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host, Kirsty Krause, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here on the show with Boomtown Saints, it is the backstage pass. Of course, final show of the week because of football and some other stuff going on out there, too. And the fact that I just want to take a break, too. That's a good thing. And next week, we'll get back with our friend Braden Zink here on the show. Fantastic uh, Texas country artist. As I mentioned there, Megan Patrick on September 22nd. Caitlin Smith coming up. Always somebody great coming here on the uh, show. Terrific artists here. The biggest, the brightest, and the best, including Boomtown Saints. Chris, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. And uh, what's up next? All right, so this is the first song we ever released independently. Uh, I mean, I guess we can credit this to being signed because uh, this hit number one in a few markets around the South and got us noticed. Um, yeah. Man, this is uh, this is called Even on a Bad Day, and it's going to be on our uh, EP. Uh, we recorded it. It's going to have a new version on there that nobody, nobody at all has heard. But uh, this is called Even on a Bad Day. It goes like this. Clouds creeping in like a thief on the loose. Trying to steal the way I'm feeling about you. 
So go ahead and let it rain on down the rain. I will love you crazy even on bad days. Even on a bad day, I'm on top of the world. Even when the ground breaks, I count on you, girl. Hold me up high, making it all right. Then what can I say? I'll love you crazy even on day day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't need any love from a wishing with no time for superstition. Ain't no fortunes to take. No crystal ball telling me I've got it made. I'll love you crazy even on bad day. Cause even on a bad day, I'm on top of the world. Even when the ground breaks, I count on you, girl. Hold me up high, making it all right. Then what can I say? I'll love you crazy even on bad day. Guitar solo, come on. Everything keeps going my way. Even on bad day, I'm on top of the world. Even when the ground breaks, well, I can't on you, girl. Even on bad day, I'm on top of the world. Even when the ground breaks, I count on you, girl. Hold me up high, making it all right. Then what can I say? I will be crazy even on big things. Yeah, I love you crazy even on the big things. Yeah. I love the guitar solo. Let it go, Chris. He's just letting it all hang out there, man. Hair flying, the guitar just kind of bouncing yeah, up and down. Old, that's, so yeah. I was trying to, you couldn't see it. Ruined everything, man. Bad. Or play the air guitar. That's how cool it was. Uh, back here on the show again, guys, just jamming out here with Boomtown uh, Saints, too, as well. We'll have a little rapid fire in a second. Um, you know, the touring, guys, you got, you mentioned earlier in the show, I think, Chris, you said that about this is the time of year where uh, venues are full again. Of course, uh, musicians are busy, which is amazingly uh, a good thing that's happened to the industry after what we went through uh, previously with that pandemic. I mean, for you guys, touring again has picked up. You mentioned uh, just last week at, at the racetrack, of course, and now moving forward, I'm sure the schedule's got to get busy with touring, right? Yeah, man. We, uh, we've we got shows coming up in uh, Christiansburg, Virginia, which is just outside of Roanoke. Excited about there. Great Road on Main. Uh, it's an absolutely legendary venue. We're actually super excited about that one. If y'all know about that venue, check it out. Uh, we're actually going to be one of the first few concerts who've been in there. They, they, they've graciously opened the doors to allow us to come in there. Uh, we are headed to Oxford. We're headed to Columbus. We're headed to Atlanta. We're headed to uh, Knoxville. Um, and so Athens. many places, Athens, Georgia, uh, yeah. Starkville, Mississippi, um, and, and everywhere in between. We're going out to Oregon early next year, uh, Oregon and Washington early next year. So, uh, yeah, man, we uh, hopefully here, we're working on something in Kentucky right now. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're excited about what's coming up, but we're about to get super busy. So we're just enjoying time with the family right now, uh, two, three days a week as we can. before we're <laughs> oh, man, you, you got a baby time. coming up here soon. You got to have at least, you know, yeah. two days off. I'm going to take two days off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll need that, too. And you're, and you're, as you know, your sleep schedule will be. Two uh, days is good enough. Thank you. Love you, honey. Bye. <laughs> got to go tour. <laughs> Next stop, please. Load the bus up. Uh, just some fans tuning in. Appreciate you guys. Again, go subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel for the backstage pass and for the guys here at uh, Boomtown Saints. Appreciate the viewers and listeners. Megan, yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's yeah, we I could do a whole show of just me shutting up and, and them playing. That's that's the best part of it, too. And Roxanne, thanks for tuning in on YouTube out there for us, too, as well. Uh, Casey, yep, I agree with that, too. That's that's what I say. And and I tell you what, next time we get them on, Megan, I, I agree because 
uh, we definitely wanted to play two for you too, but I'm ready for that EP to come out too. So one more song, one more song, just get out there. And the fact that uh, then we got to get into a little rapid fire. All right, with football season opening, I know for me, I'm a fanatic. I'll be in front of the TV watching my uh, Arizona Cardinals coming up this Sunday, hosting the Kansas City Chiefs, and then my wife will have the uh, Cowboy game on against Tampa Bay. For you guys, is it college? Is it NFL? And and who are your teams? So I, <laughs> the most important one, both. Uh, so we <laughs> uh, we are house divided. Uh, first of all, go Vols. We both agree go Titans. Go Ole Miss. Go Vols. Yeah, we don't got go Ole Miss. Miss. Uh, right. Go Vols. We played Pitt this weekend. Uh, we're going to take them by at least 45. Okay. Maybe not, but we're going to try. Uh, go Titans, though. So th- those are our teams. He's Ole Miss. Uh, I, oh, he's actually Dallas Cowboys. I, I, I'm a well. Dallas Cowboys fan, buddy. <laughs> I've been mean, through since I was a baby. Yeah, so so right. that's the only one. Titans, Cowboys, with. Vols, and Rebels. That's okay. that's yeah. where we're at. Programs again that are that are definitely growing. I, I tell you this, uh, Ben. I did predict the Cowboys to uh, in my weekly picks that I, I put up there on my stuff. Uh, uh, I've got Dallas beating Tampa Sunday night prime time. It's a home game, and I think it's not a bad pick. It's not a bad pick. Bad pick. I, it, it, yeah, I just just a gut telling me. And again, I'm not a a Texans fan either, but after getting outscored playing Indianapolis this week, and it was uh, 62 to three, Indianapolis beat the crap out of Houston in two games last year okay. by that score. I think Davis Mills is going to come back better for the Texans and play better. I think Dak's going to play better. I think for Dallas, uh, you've got a CD Lamb and you've got a Gallup coming back when he's healthy. Uh, two at the same time, and I think um, uh, Elliot is going to have a bounce back season. I'm not somebody off my screen. He's going to have to. Dallas he has to. Not have everybody healthy at the same time. Dallas and, and that's key. is one of the best teams in the league, hands down. As mm-hmm. much as I don't want to admit it, uh, Dallas are. healthy they is are. one of the best teams in the league. There's nobody. They're a Super Bowl contending team every mm-hmm. single year. It just got to stay healthy. They got to stay and healthy. I will say the injury to to Tyron Smith is going to hurt that offensive line. They're bringing in a guy who's. Uh, you know, like I said, I say ageless wonder, Jason Peters had just re-signed or signed Jason <laughs> Peters as well. You know, it's great because you get that good line behind you. Uh, you hit your blocks as a former football coach. You, you fire off a football. You open up holes. And uh, I'll say Tony Pollard, too, Ben, is yeah. as a key this year for Dallas to be to be successful. I, mean, I really think so. He's been – he's been – Yeah, he's – but you know what? The Titans, though. Just, I, yeah, Derrick Henry. I, mean, Derek <laughs> I, Henry. I know. I don't even know. If, honestly, <laughs> if we're, just if we're talking football for the Titans, uh, the fact that last season uh, that was the year uh, we had we had the team going to the playoff game. I was actually there. I was sitting right behind the goalpost. Uh, I was twenty <laughs> rows up, and we finished with four interceptions. And yeah, uh, yeah, that that last year was the year. We're hoping to maybe rekindle something this to year. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah to, to, to lose our receiving core that we lost, and uh, the the the, def- the defense was built for a Super Bowl last year, and we lost some key. I mean, people people that people don't even know like Matthias <laughs> Farley of the world. Uh, lost him. Uh, he's a leader in the locker room. We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully the Titans can. We can talk out. about sports all day long. Oh, you're right here with someone who can't do his football <laughs> announcement at the same That's time. True. Who's in three fantasy football drafts? And we got the comments coming in. Megan, there you go. Cowboys and uh, Jeffrey Broncos. Hell, Megan Patrick coming up here in a couple of weeks. She's a huge uh, Buffalo Bills fan. Anybody that knows well, her, so she's a Canadian uh, gal and she's singing well. So we will talk football here in the next. Uh, you know, uh, 10, 16, 18 weeks, whatever it takes to get through the season all the way to the Super Bowl, because this is the time of the year where my schedule does uh, pick up. And as a football announcer, I could do 30 minutes with you guys on just uh, nothing but football. So, Jeffrey, yeah, Broncos have a good year. Russell Wilson, of course, Jerry Judy. Uh, this is going to be a, a key year for uh, the Las Vegas Raiders and Josh McDaniels and uh, Devontae Adams, Derek Carr and Darren Waller. So this is going to be a fun, uh, fun year. And I think this is the mo- one of the most exciting seasons after all the, the turnover in free agency and, of course, the, the draft which is exciting. And I'm back with you, uh, Chris. If I'd been at that football game, I lost some money. I was pissed at the time. Man, I'll tell money. you what. I, I played against the Bengals. I did. I into that game, I, I, I was sitting behind the goalpost, and I told my buddy, Jacob, I was sitting with him, and I was like, man, I just hope I, I just hope Tannehill comes out and doesn't do that thing he did a couple times this season. First, and that was it. That's what first, happened. First, he said something, and it went to crap. <laughs> first play of the game, interception. Coming, coming into the we, – we were driving, and I was like, man, I just hope he doesn't throw an interception. And the next play, it was an interception, and here we are talking about – Oh, man. And, and, and that's because I, I would have – I think uh, compared to what I would have won in, in the league and then uh, um, the, the betting on it, whatever thing I used, whatever the thing was, I uh, <laughs> lost about a yeah, buck. Yeah, I, I would have won 750 on my 
picks for the the, the betting uh, you know wagering. So anyway, which again, people out there, you know, you do it, do it responsibly. But I always say that too. At the same time, just uh, lose what you can lose. If you know you're going to lose going into it, don't expect to win. Yeah, I don't but, bet uh, anymore, especially on it. my teams. Everyone, <laughs> listen, don't bet on your teams. Yes, <laughs> do not bet on like your teams. I'm at that point, so I learned that a few years ago. So. Although you know the cool thing is, I'll say this about about this uh, this this trend of the last couple of years having the home team win the Super Bowl in their home stadium. I don't know. Could that continue for a third year in a row? <laughs> well, it, the Super Bowl is in Glendale, State Farm okay. Stadium. It's in Glendale in February, so that's my team, the Cardinals. So, <laughs> so I, you know, the Tennessee L.A. Rams, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Could it be a third year in a row? Because the past, the previous, what, 55, 54 Super Bowls, it never happened. In the next two, you get winning in their home mm-hmm. stadium. Go figure that. Out. So it's that's uh, it's amazing how to do that. All right, let's let's talk some food. Um, Cooking, takeout. What do you guys love to do for food and, and family and, and all that good stuff? Drinks, things like that. So I uh, I started smoking uh, meats probably <clears throat> three years ago. And Ben, actually, when he came over here today, he was like, look at this. I've got a brisket on the on the smoker right now that <laughs> you know, we're going to have for dinner. Tonight. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ribs. I'll shoot, man. I'll I'll make anything. I'll, I'll make okay. shrimp, smoked shrimp. I mean, anything. That's that's kind of my thing. Grilling and smoking food's my thing, and he's getting into it finally because uh, I've been into it for some years now. And he's. I, he's I saw something ones. the other day. You get to a certain age, it's like you either buy a new car or you start smoking meats. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, <laughs> so or both. We're not. We're, or, 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 both. <laughs> or both. So yeah. So we we uh it, it, into smoking meats, man. I'll. I'll uh, mm-hmm. I got some recipes, but oh I'm man, all that now because that's you get up there for CRS 2023. I'm gonna let's, let's try some smoked meats up there and uh, have a good time. I'll come over. I'll bring the beer. How's that sound? Come on now, that. let's go. <laughs> <Bring it. laughs> Which is good there, no doubt too. All right, last one. We'll have fun with this one. I hadn't had done this in a while, but it's just in a good mood today. I want to do it. All right, um, think of your favorite movies of all time. Your favorite actors. If you guys could portray uh, portray any actor out there and put yourself in a movie. Uh, what actor would you be and when, what type of movie, you know, crime type thing, mystery, comedy, drama, who, who would you portray as the actor and what movie, what kind of movie would you be? What kind of genre of a movie? All right. I got one. Go. And as a matter of fact, I'm about to, I'm about to put uh, some people on blast and they're not going to like this. So I recently <laughs> found my favorite, one of my top three favorite movies uh, because I thought it was a true story was catch me if you can. Uh, Robert, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Adam Nail Jr. Mm-hmm. Um, I just found out in a podcast recently in the last three days that, that, so the whole movie is about a con man who's conned a bunch of people. Turns out that the biggest con has been that none of it's true. Um, however, Leo, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio played him in this movie and, uh, it was an absolutely incredible movie, but, uh, yeah, I would have to say something leo related related to that movie even though my favorite movie of all time is um that's probably one of my top two favorite movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. harrison ford the last crusade <laughs> I, was oh, gonna, yes. I was thinking I that too and i said you don't even like a great harrison ford any He's anything gonna... any indiana jones movie has always been like i, I have the whole entire dvd dvd set yeah i can stream it but i still have the dvd set back when we couldn't <laughs> yeah. And so I, I absolutely love Harrison Ford in those movies. He was just, he was a man. So he, he sure <laughs> can, you, can we just discuss that you just censored bad and not the other one? He said bad. He went, ah, uh, whatever. Man. <laughs> I don't know how to self-censor. I was trying my best. Okay. Tried his best. <laughs> I love the comparisons you guys put there, no doubt. Uh, I love the music so much. Glad we connected to you guys. Uh, All Trucks Go to Heaven is the single out there at radio. And, of course, streaming uh, came out July 15th. Make sure you guys go uh, check that out. It's Boomtown Saints. It's uh, Boomtown Saints. It's Chris and and Ben, of course. Uh, hey, best of luck with the EP, the tour schedule, the rest of the year. Uh, great to catch up with you guys. Looking forward to doing this again. Hope you had fun. Absolutely, man. Yes, Thank, you, Thank you so Thank very you much. Nice pass. This has been awesome. You got it. Boomtown Saints, of course, we're done for the week. We'll see you guys next week on the show. Brayden Zink going to join us next week on Tuesday. From all of us here at the Backstage Pass, enjoy the weekend, of course. And uh, whatever you do, enjoy football, do it responsibly, and we'll see you soon. Take care.